Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Michael White. I am the Vice President of Open Source here at Syngoma Technologies. I'm very excited to explore with you how uh, you can expand your UC offering and unlock new revenue streams with Syngoma's wholesale trunking services. Um, our goal for today's ses session is to introduce this powerful platform. You know, our goal is to consolidate telecom services for free PBX resellers and ultimately make it much easier for you and your customers to manage and grow their businesses. Uh, I'm joined today by experts in this business, Sebastian Keeley, who is the Executive Vice President of Network Operations here for Sangoma. I'm also in, in uh, also joined by Tim Lin, Director of Network Operations, and Tom Cavey, who is a Technical Account Manager for VoIP Innovations. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> All right, hey everybody, this is Sebastian. Um, I'm the EVP of Network Operations for Sangoma and primarily responsible for managing the VoIP Innovations or Wholesale TAS platform. Uh, for Sangoma. Really looking forward to going through and, and showing you just some of the, the things that we have to offer and then doing a back office walkthrough to show you what the platform looks like and we'll and then we'll take questions after that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. If we could jump on, we're going to just go through a couple slides here and then we're going to jump into the demo and that's really going to be the meat of this presentation. So we're going to touch on the wholesale offerings. We're going to go ahead and show the free PBX demo and the integration that we have built in. And uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, as a communication service provider, everybody on this call uh, is probably fits into this mold here. There's a lot of challenges uh, that we see. Most of the customers that that VI or single the wholesale carrier services has are customers just like you, folks that are using open source, uh, bringing in their own types of platforms. There's a lot of challenges out there and our platform aims to make your job easier, uh, have you focused on growing revenue instead of managing your customers and doing the day to day. Um, so we've got a, a really great platform. Um, we're able to pretty much roll in everything that you may need into one pane of glass, whether that's voice mess, voice or SMS or compliance services, 10 DLC, stir shaking compliance, it's all built in. Um, and unlike a lot of the, the products that you might be familiar with, where you're buying a SIP channel, SIP trunk, and you're paying kind of that flat rate charge, our uh, system is, is built on a usage model. So it scales to whatever capacity you need. You'll never run into an issue of not being able um, to send, you know, send out the calls or receive calls. A lot of offerings, you know, you, you buy you know, 10 SIP trunks, and then you, you find that you're maxing those out, you've got to buy more. You won't have any of those challenges with us. You can grow as your business grows, we'll grow with you. And it's a metered billing. Uh, security is also a huge concern for communication service providers. I can't tell you how many times we came in on a Monday morning and had customers with thousand dollar international bills because they had an extension hacked or PBX hacked. So we've got solutions that are there to protect you for, for things like that. Um, we've got DDoS protection on our on our border. So in the event that um, you know we've got a problematic actor that hits us with a volumetric DDoS attack, we have the ability to mitigate that. And unfortunately, we had to go through something like that in 2017, uh, but we came out stronger for it. So we've got uh, robust security on on the SBC side, on the network side for for DDoS, and you know we're we're very much uh, a security based company. And I think the most important thing is when you start dealing with WIP innovations, um, you're going to be looking at pricing that is presumably better than what you're getting. If you're going out and buying SIP trunks from whomever, uh, VoIP innovations pricing is very, very aggressive and affordable. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the next slide. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, this platform is really designed to cater to your needs and everything we've done from the, the time that we started this business a long time ago is to solve the challenges that you have with your customers to make your experience easier. We wanna provide choice, automation and control all in one pane of glass. And you know, I, I hate using this expression, but one throat to choke. If you're already buying Sangoma products, there's no reason why you shouldn't be at least testing out this product to see if, if this is something that can round out your offering, reduce your cost and make your life ultimately a lot easier. 
We've got a great back office that we're going to be going through shortly. Um, you have the ability to actually connect all of your customers to our platform. If you don't have an SBC, that's not a problem. We can act as your SBC. Everything that we have in the back office is available via API. And we're connected to every carrier in the industry. So we've got the largest footprint that you're going to find in North America. Uh, because if you're going to level three or you're going to peerless, you're going to IntelliQuant, you're going to Verizon, um, we've taken all of those providers and brought them into our offering. So it's all there for your dis at your disposal with no, no big commitments or anything like that. <clears throat> and we just make it easy for you. Um, we provide fraud protection and detection. We'll get into that in the demo. <clears throat> and we also have a hosted billing module that has a tax solution built into it. Uh, and we'll get into all that. And uh, so let's go to the next slide. All right, this is really just touching on some of the stuff we did. I've, I've, I've uh, hit on a, a number of these things, but we provide you know, inbound, outbound, DID, CNAM, on net, off net, CNAM, um, toll free, toll free termination, and uh, integration with MS Teams. Uh, we've got a CPAS platform. We're not going to be diving into that too much today. Um, I'm looking forward to doing another webinar in, in the upcoming months to go into our CPAS offering. It's a platform called Appadays. It's highly powerful. And um, if, is anyone, if anyone is interested in that before that time, please reach out and we can schedule a demo and go through that. Um, as I said, everything we've done is to make your life easier. So with the environment changing in telecom so rapidly, you've got stir shake and you've got 10 DLC for SMS. We've rolled all of that into our platform. So you don't need to go out and find a stir shake and provider that can sign your calls. You don't need to go to the 10 DLC page and register campaigns. You can do all of that within our portal with ever even, without ever leaving our portals, which is, uh, again, we're just trying to make it easier for everybody to save you time. Um, all of our products, as I mentioned, are uh, available via API, but as far as offnet, so we've got CNAM 911 and SMS. So that means if you have telephone numbers on, say, Verizon, and you are you don't want to move them, you're happy with it, but you find that, hey, we could save money by using CNAM and 911 and SMS on VI. We can take any of those services and provide them a la carte. So we don't actually need to have the telephone number. We can provide any of these, any of these services a la carte. Um, at a very affordable rate. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, uh, this is the, Tom, I think this is the time where I want you to share your screen if you're ready and uh, we'll get started on the back office walkthrough. All right, sounds good. Let me go ahead and share here. Okay, all right, uh, so, uh, so this is Tom Cavey. I'm the technical account manager here at VoIP Innovations. Uh, I do portal demos. I'd be happy to give everyone a little tour of our back office web portal today. <clears throat> um, so this is a demo account in our portal. Um, this is kind of just a general landing page here at a glance view of the entire account. How many DIDs I have, um, how many termination calls I've been making, just kind of like a bird's eye view of the account here. But uh, we'll start running through some of our tabs here. Uh, what I normally like to start with, I, I guess, before I move on to that, um, you, uh, you have administrator access to this portal. You can create sub users, uh, pretty much uh, any you know, sub uh, users that you need to sub accounts with permissions. Uh, uh, Two-factor authentication, there's some security options in here. Not going to dive too far into that today, but what I wanted to get started with was the endpoints tab. This is pretty much going to be step one. If someone uh, signs up with VoIP Innovations, they're, you know, you're going to want to start to connect your devices to us, your PBX systems, so that you can start to send and receive calls. Um, so I'm going to jump straight into endpoints and then endpoint group management on the sub menu here. I've got a bunch of test endpoint groups. We use the word endpoint group. These are basically SIP trunks. Um, so uh, if you click on add endpoint group here, this is how you're going to connect the device to us, a PBX, a phone system. Um, you can connect via IP, um, you know, just type in the static IP address. You can always add more later. Uh, basically just filling out a form here, uh, ch uh, choosing some options like robocall mitigation. This is like, uh, <clears throat> it, it can identify suspicious incoming calls uh, to your DIDs. Um, you know, various other things like uh, tech prefix and prepend digits. These are optional fields, but 
Uh, the, the main options I wanted to highlight here were how to connect a device to us, whether that's via IP, whether that's via username, password authentication. Uh, we do have easy integration into Sangoma products, which is why we have the Sangoma PBX option here. This can easily integrate into a free PBX system, a switch box, PB exact. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, show that integration here in a moment, but before I do that, I just wanted to touch on uh, some of these endpoint group settings. So. Uh, let's go into one of my test endpoint groups here. I guess we'll just go into this McDonald's endpoint group here. So you can see I have one static IP address registered. Um, as long as I have an endpoint group, a trunk, I can send calls, I can receive calls, I can build DIDs to this trunk. Um, <clears throat> international settings, this always defaults to off, but you know, if you do want to uh, turn on international calls, what you can do is pick a daily spending limit. This is going to uh, limit the number or, or limit the total amount of money in US dollars that this trunk can spend in one day. Uh, th this is kind of what we call our fraud protection. This, um, you know, this is going to prevent or really uh, reduce the risk for international calling because you know, it's going to stick to this number. Whatever number you type in here, it's going to shut off calls at that amount. It's going to kill the in-progress calls, prevent further calls until you go in here and uh, you know, give further attention to this trunk by bumping up that number or you know, leaving it off. But, uh, you know, prior to hey, Tom, implementing this, yeah, go ahead. Let me touch on this just a bit, guys. Yeah, so go for when it. I mentioned that, you know, years ago, we'd come into the office on Monday and it would be rare not to come in and have one of our customers. We've got 1,500 or so uh, MSPs that are, that are connected to us. It would be rare to come in on a Monday and not have a customer with a massive uh, international charge that we'd have to work with them. Obviously, we want to uh, try to not, char not charge them any profit on that. So we're working out some type of credit. Um, and so our developers created a system here that, as Tom mentioned, you put in that international daily spend limit of $50. You will never come in on a Monday morning and have a, a, a bill larger than $50. It'll automatically shut it off. And a lot of companies out there have fraud protection where if they see you know weird charges on your account or uh, something over the weekend they'll prevent any new calls from happening the problem is if you've got 100 calls established to the dominican republic for example and they're on for an hour right that even though you prevented new calls from from happening you're still walking in monday morning to you know multi-thousand dollar bill this prevents that from happening uh since we did that i think this is pretty much nipped all international fraud in the bud so this is a great product free of charge. Um, we'll get into fraud detection later, but I just wanted to touch on this just a little bit. Tom, back to you. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, so that's, yeah, that's pretty much our international settings. Again, you can toggle this on or off anytime and it defaults to off. You know, this is something you have to opt into basically allowing any calls to outside of the US or Canada. Um, staying on the theme of endpoint groups here, I think, uh, Sebastian, I might real briefly turn it back over to you. Know, usually turn it back over to you for the for the sure. sites for our SIP signaling yeah. IPs here. Yeah, so, so uh, today, today we have three uh, data centers, um, two in Pittsburgh and one in Memphis. Um, that's our DR site. Both Pittsburgh sites are on different parts of the city. Uh, we're actually migrating those data centers to Atlanta and Las Vegas. We actually have the equipment racked and stacked, ready to go. We haven't made the cut over yet, but the future design will be Atlanta, Las Vegas, and Memphis is the tertiary pop. Any one of these POPs um, can run the entire operation of the company alone. So God forbid we lose two of three POPs, you won't even notice that there's a problem. Provided your systems are connected and using the primary, secondary, and tertiary IP addresses, you won't even know that we had an outage. Uh, most of our servers and compute are in AWS uh, and in our own private cloud. Um, and distributed across the country. So the whole goal of this platform is to make it highly redundant, highly scalable, uh, and resilient to any type of issues. Tom? Thanks, Sebastian. Um, did you want to touch on the, the DDoS protection at all? Yeah, sure. Um, so on our ingress points into our network, we run Arbor um, Prevails. And if in the event we're hit with a volumetric DDoS attack, we've got a secondary connection out to the internet where these things can basically phone home and say, hey, we're under attack. 
Um, this is under the presumption that our main uh, bandwidth links that are in, that coming into our data center are saturated. We're being hit with a vol volumetric attack. It signals out through this out of band channel out to Arbor Cloud. At that point, Arbor will then announce all of our IP space and then route that traffic to us over a series of 16 IPsec tunnels. And they scrub the, you know, the volumetric bad traffic out. And uh, the end result for you is if this ever happens to us, this system is automated. It's been tested. Hell, we ran on this system for three months in 2017 and really worked out all the kinks. As you can imagine, running all your traffic through some type of cloud scrubbing provider, um, you run into some issues, some kink configuration, whitelist, things like that. All that has been aut uh, automated, and I can say it works very well. Um, you are very excited about it. We've uh, since moving over to Sangoma. We were purchased by Sangoma in 2019. Uh, we have since uh, migrated and, and kind of used the Arbor DDoS infrastructure on the entire Sangoma network. Tom, back to you. Thank you, Sebastian. Appreciate that. Um, so let's jump back into the endpoint groups here. Just kind of wanted to show everyone what this free PBX module looks like. So if you do have something like a uh, again, I mentioned Switchbox, free PBX, PB exec, but let's take a look at how to quickly uh, integrate into a free PBX. I have a trunk here that I've created called free PBX demo. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and you can see that I have a key here. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into my free PBX. So I'm going to go in there. Uh, under connectivity, there should be a metered SIP trunking uh, button here. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Uh, and this is where you can paste in that code. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Click on add key. Uh, so what this is going to do, uh, sorry about that guys. <laughs> I think I might've misconfigured something here. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go to the wiki here just to kind of show everyone uh, what this module can do. It can automatically <clears throat> configure the VI endpoint in free PBX, automatically create DI, uh, inbound routes for DIDs associated with the endpoint, real-time connectivity stats. So instead of manually configuring your free PBX, entering in all of those SIP signaling IP addresses, creating trunks and all, it's going to do all the work for you with that. Uh, I do apologize I wasn't able to show everyone what that looks like, but uh, <clears throat> should just be a real click, easy configuration there. <clears throat> um, you paste in that key and it's going to do all the work for you. Um, <clears throat> so we, we can, you know, we can, you know, talk about that a little bit more later, answer questions on that. But uh, Mike on the call, did you want to uh, add any color to this? Did you want to add anything to the to the free PBX module that I may have missed, or should we? No, I think you you definitely nailed it. I I think absolutely some of the key value proposition for this module is, you know, the connectivity between your platform and the individual free PBX. You know, as if you bring a new customer on to VI or you do a port, once it's in that account or on the endpoint, the DID has been assigned, you know, it's going to write them into your into your free PBX. So long gone are the days of painstakingly copying, pasting, and dealing with human error as you set up with your, you know, hundreds of inbound routes on a per customer basis. These are automatically added to inbound routes as you port the numbers in, as you add new IDs new DIDs to the account, and then you can simply manage them from there. So this is uh, quite a step forward from, you know, what we've seen. And, and it brings, frankly, you know, a lot of our retail logic from products like SipStation directly into the application. So great work, VI team. Um, you know, this was a product that, um, you know, much like the, the VI group, my team, my company was acquired by Sangoma. You know, this this is not a, a new product or a new module for free PBX. You know, this is tried and true, tested in the community. When did we put this out, Tom? Well over two years ago. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. So so this has been there, and uh, you know, so like I said, tried and true, customer tested, and and very easy to use. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> uh, let's, uh, Tom. let's jump back into the portal here. So. Again, endpoints, pretty much step one, getting your endpoint groups created. Now you have SIP trunks. Now you've pretty much unlocked all the features of our portal. I'm going to briefly touch on all the tabs here. I'm going to start with DIDs back up at the top. <clears throat> this is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can go and manage DIDs, purchase new ones out of our inventory. If I click on purchase DIDs here, you'll see that I can purchase local numbers, toll-free, vanity, international, premium, 
uh, if I click on local DIDs here, I mean, this is pretty simple to, to browse our inventory by rate center, by area code, zip code. If you need specific features on your number, you can, you can select like T38 for faxing, SMS for texting, outbound CNAM support. <clears throat> I'm just going to real quickly run through uh, what it's like to browse our inventory here, but it's going to list them by rate center. Uh, we have uh, various uh, tiered pricing. You're going to know what you're paying up front, monthly recurring cost, activation fee, per minute usage. Uh, let's just pretend that I purchased a new number out of our inventory here. Uh, we would see an alert at the top of the screen saying that I have one unconfigured DID. Let's go ahead and click that. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and configure this number. The only thing I really need to do here is build this DID somewhere. Most commonly, that's going to be one of the endpoint groups you've created. So you know, I have that free PBX demo. I can point it there. There is uh, several DID level services that are configurable here. Uh, failover number, this is an automatic number failover. Uh, let's say if I pointed to this free PBX and maybe there's a public internet issue, the PBX is down, we can automatically roll that call over to any 10 digit number. Maybe this is an end user cell phone, just something that <clears throat> they can use in an emergency if they're not getting inbound traffic for that, for that number. Uh, <clears throat> we've got CNAM lookup, so this is inbound call caller ID name, if you turn that on, <clears throat> we will start to uh, send the name of the incoming caller. We're going to you know, dip a, a, a nationwide CNAM database and send you the, the name of the caller. Uh, hey, Tom, got, let me pause right there. Oh, let me sure. Pause right there, guys, and apologize. So one thing that we like to make things easy, we, Mike, we like to make things cheap for our customers. So we provide CNAM, everybody does, but we what we provide on top of that is the ability to see if, if a robocaller or, or tele, a telemarketer or some type of fraud, a fraudulent caller is calling you. So without ever uh, doing anything, if, if you enable CNAM on our network and you have the ability to kind of um, configure your system so that if someone's calling in, it looks at the, the fraud score for a number. And if it is, you know, let's say one is clean and 100 is bad, you can set all these up, these variables up in your system. Instead of presenting the caller ID of whomever is calling you, if it's a fraudulent caller, it will present that caller ID uh, to your user. And we do that free of charge. Back to you, Tom. Thank you. Um, so we've got, uh, this is inbound CNAM, CNAM lookup, and then we've got outbound as well. Uh, this is free to register. Uh, I can type in a name here. It's going to propagate into a, into a national CNAM database so that when you make outbound calls from your DID, the receiving caller should be able to pull that name as long as they're, they themselves are doing a, a CNAM lookup. Uh, we've got <clears throat> E911. This is how you register a uh, name and address to a number. You just click on where it says unregistered and you can you know, register it with a name and address. This is uh, compliant with Ray Bombs Act, Carey's Law. Uh, you can put uh, like a room or suite number on the address line too. Uh, we also support dynamic 911 location routing via the PID flow header. So if you do want to tell us on the call specifically where that caller is located, you can pre-register addresses in our system. Maybe there are employees in the office, maybe they're working from home. You can tell us exactly where they're located just by <clears throat> taking advantage of our 911 dynamic location routing. So. Uh, on the subject of 911, we can do off network 911. So essentially, you can register any 10 digit number with 911 service in this portal. Uh, that can be done from the 911 tab, even if the number is not currently on the VoIP Innovations network. You know, if, you're, if your end user is making outbound calls, maybe from numbers that are through other carriers, and, but they're, you know, the outbound call makes it to our network, you can, you can pre register those, uh, those phone numbers with the 911 service. Uh, directory listing. Uh, this is for 411 listings. Typically, this is like a one-time listing fee. We can do residential business or government listings. Just fill out this form. Uh, we have e-fax service. We can do email to fax. This is an outbound faxing service where you can authorize email addresses to send faxes <clears throat> directly from their email account. You would open a new message in a client such as Gmail. You can attach a PDF file that contains the fax and you can send it out to any 10, uh, 10 digit destination. So that's our hosted outbound faxing. We also have hosted inbound faxing. This is fax to email. So essentially what you can do, if your DID supports T38, the, the, the protocol for faxing, you can turn this option on 
basically making your DID into a dedicated inbound fax line. You type in one or more email addresses here. If someone sends a fax to your number, it will be the fax transmission will be forwarded as a PDF to any email addresses that you type in here. Uh, let's see, we've uh, <clears throat> got DID notes. This is if you want to remember something about your DIDs, you can you know, type in some notes for that. Uh, SMS, we have multiple ways to <clears throat> send and receive text messages. We've got SIP goes directly to your PBX. We've got email, just like our fax solution, we can handle SMS through email, inbound and outbound. Um, so you can authorize uh, clients to send or receive directly through email. Forwarding, we can take any text messages sent to this number and forward them, maybe like a cell phone. So it's a one-to-one -one forward. We've got API functionality. You can forward, uh, you can, we can pass text messages to like a webhook, a web server, uh, full API integration you can send and receive. We can do it through Microsoft Teams, our programmable platform, Appy Days that Sebastian mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll touch a little bit more on SMS on the next tab, but I just kind of wanted to show everyone <clears throat> the DID level services that you have your, at your fingertips when you're building a, a DID to a trunk. A couple more options here. We got the, the Appy Days platform that you can point numbers to. We mentioned fax to email. We have hosted conferencing. This is certainly something a PBX can do, but if you need a real quick, you want to spin up a conference line, you can do that here. <clears throat> Your DID will, will just become a dedicated conference. You can put an optional pin. Uh, and call forwarding, maybe you're having an issue with your PBX, you just want to bypass your network entirely, you can forward uh, any DID to any 10 digit number. This is preferably, uh, preferably going to be an off network, maybe again, could be a cell phone, landline, any, any number not on the network, you just want to do a real quick one to one forward. Uh, while I'm on the subject here, any of these features are available via API. Um, the, the, the vast, I would say 99% of the things that everyone on the call can see today can be accomplished via API. So you know, maybe you want to real quickly forward a bunch of numbers at the same time. You can, you know, we've got bulk tools to handle that. We've got API connectivity to handle that, but you know, that's pretty much the DID management aspect. I think before I leave this tab, I'll go to <clears throat> where it says manage DIDs here, just to show everyone what that looks like. Uh, give me a sec here. Oh, geez. Open. Sorry, everyone, give me a moment here. Just waiting on my system to refresh here. Sorry about that. No problem, Tom. Yeah, so... I hear your, I hear your garage door may have opened. <laughs> it, it, it may have. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the, the DID management screen. So, so this is where you can go and see all of the DIDs on your account, where they're pointed to. You can search and filter. Uh, again, we've got the bulk tools. If you, may, Maybe you want to add a forward to 100 numbers at a time. You can do that via this screen. Uh, so if I click the pen and paper icon next to the DID, I can at any time relaunch that management screen. Maybe you want to make additional changes to those numbers. Pretty easy to do that. In the, this is a very self-serve portal. You know, there's not really much at all you would need to contact VoIP Innovations for. You know, we put these uh, services at your fingertips here. So, um, okay, aside from DID management, let's start jumping through these tabs real quick. SMS, this is just a dedicated um, Tom, hub. If we could go, oh, if we could go oh, right sure. back, I'm going to touch on personal inventory and I'll, I'll talk through yeah. this. So personal inventory, we, we have millions of DIDs in inventory, but personal inventory gives you the ability to go in and, and say, I always want to have 10 DIDs in this rate center. I don't want to have to worry about it. I just want to make sure it's always stocked. The personal inventory has fulfillment rules where you can go and say, I need 10 DIDs. As you deplete the DIDs within your personal inventory, our system will automatically go ahead and refill those to your specifications. So this is a great way to make sure that you have the DIDs in the areas you want in your own control and generally with the personal inventory forget about these prices that you see here this is a, a rack rate account um generally with the personal inventory since those DIDs are not in use we generally can can price those where you know it's it's a lot less than what you're paying for an active did something like that so this is something you can use just to make sure you're all, always ready with the dids you need for your customers in the area that you support thanks tom yeah no problem um, so moving on to the SMS tab. Uh, so, so this is just a dedicated area for you to manage your SMS. Uh, Sebastian earlier on the call mentioned that we have 10 DLC 
uh, connectivity. So we have an account with the campaign registry. You could very well sign up directly with them, but we put all of their features <clears throat> into our back office portal here. So you can register, uh, the campaign registry calls them brands. We, we, we call them customers. So you can register end user accounts or for your own company. If you're, you know, if you're, uh, uh running texting for your own company, you can register those, <clears throat> create campaigns, uh, it's it's all possible in our portal. You don't have to leave. You don't have to go anywhere. We have all of this documented on our wiki with pricing. This is also available via API, <clears throat> so you you can kind of save yourself some you know, time and a little bit of money by having to sign up directly with the campaign registry. So their entire feature set, uh, the registration process is totally available from start to finish in this portal. Uh, let's see, E911, <clears throat> we kind of touched on that earlier in the configuration screen, but this is just a specific hub for you to go to to manage all of your 911 registrations. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you just click on add new DID, you can add 911 service to any 10 digit number, it doesn't have to be on our network. Uh, we can also third party SMS enable number so you can do off network sms uh, this allows us to take ownership just of the sms portion of the number uh, the e spid for the sms so uh, if there's a number sitting on uh, a different carrier and you have a customer that you know they want to text enable that number we can do that in this portal as well so you just click on off network add that sms number <clears throat> you know if they're sending outbound text messages you can you know go through the registration process but just kind of Here, wanted to highlight thing. Oh, go for it. Sorry. Oh, no, I wanted to interrupt. I, I did want to mention, too, that, you know, enabling SMS features in this interface also enables SMS in uh, free PBX. So if you're familiar with Syngoma Talk or Syngoma Phone, our desktop and uh, mobile offering, you'll know that bringing SMS through Syngoma does enable that in those applications, MMS as well. So that's a key part of the module and tie-in as well. Thank you. Back to you, yeah, Tom. Thanks, Mike. Yep. <clears throat> so, okay, we talked about SMS and 911. Uh, term, this is for, uh, I mean, we, we call it termination. This is essentially sending us outbound calls, uh, viewing your stats. Uh, we have multiple outbound rate plans that you can choose from, standard like an LCR, enterprise quality uh, termination rate plan, customizable. Uh, but this is just where you would go to view your outbound rate, see how much it costs to call specific destinations, view your, your trends and your <clears throat> termination stats here. Uh, tickets, uh, we have 24 seven technical support. So, you know, our support team is always happy to you know, take a look at trouble tickets that you could submit in the portal. You can call us at any time. Uh, so if you open a new ticket, you'll have access to support, <clears throat> uh, porting and provisioning. We have dedicated LNP that's here Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, and various other departments like billing, hosted billing, I'll touch on that later and happy days. Uh, let's see, we'll go to the billing tab. This is just where you can do things like view CDRs. <clears throat> we keep several years worth of call records here in the portal. Uh, you can access those via FTP or HTTP. Uh, but this is just, you know, just a billing tab where you can make payments, uh, view your rates, view your invoices, things like that, call records. Hey, Tom, if you could go back to the previous screen, this one right here uh, with the widget. So you see down at the bottom here, it says select widget. You can add whatever widgets you want and remove them. So um, a lot of these, a lot of these billing widgets, as you, just, you can see, Tom's adding them. It can show you what you want to see and, and kind of hide the stuff you don't. Uh, but we want to make sure whatever type of interface you want to, your your system to look like, we can we can customize that for you. So as you can see, we've got a, a ton of different widgets here, and, um, and and you can play around with it. So pretty much everything you'd want to see within the portal, you can present right here within the dashboard. Thanks, Tom. Yep, no problem. <clears throat> uh, so the porting tab, uh, like I mentioned, we have a dedicated LNP staff. If you need to port numbers over to our network, we have a wizard. You just type in the numbers. It's going to walk you through step by step uh, what you need to bring those numbers over to our network. Um, <clears throat> we can do project ports. You know, if you have 50 or more DIDs, we can certainly accommodate those. Uh, we have a provisioning check tool that tells you uh, the vast majority of the time, you know, numbers are portable to our network, but this tool, <clears throat> if you type in one or more numbers, it's going to tell you whether or not they can be ported over to our network. But yeah, we have an excellent LNP staff, you know, it's what they do. They port numbers all day long, so they're always happy to, you know, to help you with that. So 
Um, we talked about endpoints. That's kind of where I started just because I, I usually view that as one of the most important tabs. So we talked about that. Uh, groups and clients. Uh, this is where you can enter your customers into our system. I have a bunch of test clients on my system here. I've got McDonald's. Uh, so this is where you can track some of the things that uh, like their consumption, their usage. I have 12 DIDs assigned to this client and it's going to tell you <clears throat> what it's costing you, the, the VoIP Innovations customer, in terms of monthly recurring costs. Uh, I don't really make test calls on this account, but all of that information would be reflected here in <clears throat> inbound calls, outbound calls, international calls. It kind of tallies all that up and you know, gives you a, a breakdown of what that customer is costing you on a per month basis. Uh, this ties into several other of our platforms. We have a, what we call a, a end user portal. So what you can do is you can grant your end user a brandable white label end user portal system. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. So you can put your company's logo in here. It just says your logo here, but you can upload a logo. <clears throat> this is meant to be something that you give to your customers so they can self-manage. Um, this is very customizable. All of these tabs that, that the end user can see, you can show or hide. Um, so they would have access to the numbers you've assigned to them. They can they can make change requests. All of those <clears throat> DID level services that we saw in the wholesale VI back office portal, they can be put in the hands of the end user if that's something that you want to do. This is completely optional. It comes baked into the to the VI offering. So you can uh, have the end user make CNAM requests. Maybe they say, hey, I want to turn on CNAM for my number. I want to register. I want to do my own 911 registering. I want to <clears throat> do my own call forwarding. So that maybe this, you know, can take some of the load off of, you know, you or your team members. It's just something that you can put in the hands of the end user. Uh, a lot of this stuff can be <clears throat> um, set to approve or deny. So uh, the end user turns on a forward you can have that as a request in the portal. So they, you know, maybe you want you don't want to give your end user too much power to play around with in here, but if they want to do their own uh, forwarding and things like that, you, you can either approve or deny that back in the portal. So you would just see that as a request. Like you can get an email for that. It'll say, hey, your, your customer wants to turn on forwarding. Do you approve or deny this? So again, all of these things can be shown or hidden. Um, <clears throat> it ties into our billing system. So <clears throat> we do have a, a fully functional billing software. This allows you to bill your customers, collect payments via a payment processor. You can fully design invoices from start to finish. It even handles the taxes. Uh, there is a tax module in there where you can automatically uh, apply the correct taxes directly to the invoice. Uh, so that hosted billing system comes at a monthly subscription. You can add it to your account anytime, but it does tie into the end user portal here. And as you can see, <clears throat> this end user would be able to see that they have one outstanding invoice. They can view the invoice. They can set up recurring payments, make one-time payments. So a lot of synergy here between these three different platforms the wholesale VI back office, this white label end user portal, the hosted billing software, they all kind of tie in together. So, and, yeah, and there's various, you know what? Oh, go ahead. if I could, sorry to interrupt. Um, again, it, this all boils down to trying to make your life easier. We all have those customers that are constantly on the phone, asking questions, wanting to make changes on their account. For that type of customer, you can go ahead and give them permissions to go ahead and buy the IDs to change information so you don't have to be in the middle of it, right? If um, And you can give them as much power as Tom mentioned to do <coughs> everything, or you can put it to an approval basis or something like that. But really, this is just to save you time um, and to empower your customers to go and do what they need to do um, with their service uh, through you. Back to you, Tom. Yep, thank you, Sebastian. Um, but yeah, there's, I just kind of wanted to highlight on some of the other tabs in here. You know, usage, they can view basic usage statistics, porting, they could get the ball rolling on number ports, they can put in a port request, just kind of <clears throat> getting that process rolling, saying these are the numbers I want to port over. Uh, order history, there's a ticketing system between you and your end user. Uh, this is, you know, you would get notifications, uh, maybe, maybe they, they would say, hey, how do I order DIDs or something like that, so. So this is pretty much our end user portal. This is customizable on a per login basis. So, you know, maybe everyone's portal is a little bit different as far as your end users go, you know, and different end users have different needs, different things they want to be able to do. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of our client and end user portal uh, interface here. 
we'll go to our add-ons tab kind of <clears throat> nearing the end of this portal demo here but just the uh, hosted billing uh, i'll real quickly jump in here i'm not going to spend too much time on this but uh, this is where you can go and you know design the invoices and collect payments so this is a separate portal <clears throat> but there's a lot of integration between this billing software and the vi back office and <clears throat> comes with a free trial you know you can kind of familiarize yourself with the interface see if it's a good fit <clears throat> for your business but this is a great way to bill your customers. You can bill for pretty much anything you want. You have full control over what goes on to the invoice. You can create charges and, you know, VoIP packages, monthly recurring costs. It's, it's all possible. A lot of data can be exported from this system, <clears throat> financial reports and revenue reports. And uh, you can import call records from your VoIP innovations account. You can automatically pull off network. Like if you're using other carriers, you, if you have our, highest tier gold hosted billing package you can automatically pump calls into here and bill them to your customers so you know a lot of a lot of functionality here in the hosted billing system that's one of the add-ons you can add to your account <clears throat> uh, we mentioned fraud protection earlier we also have fraud detection this is a notification service this looks at your outbound uh, call traffic patterns and it's going to start to alert you when something looks abnormal uh, maybe one of your customers has spiked their usage is 200 percent over normal you can configure the notifications the thresholds you know maybe to help avoid false positives <clears throat> you know obviously traffic outbound traffic will fluctuate a little bit but you can say hey if it's 100 percent over normal let me know or 200 percent over normal it can text or email you um, when that uh, when that starts to happen. So it depends on how much uh, minutes of traffic you're running through our network, uh, depending on the pricing. But this is a great way to you know, stay on top of your outbound traffic pattern so that you can jump into the necessary network or PBX and, and take the necessary actions, take a look at that traffic. So Yeah, Tom, Tom that's it. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. So we talked fraud protection, fraud protection, free of charge, primarily designed for international traffic. <clears throat> broad, broad detection deals with domestic traffic. So uh, we've all presumably seen traffic pumping, fraud events where you've got an extension or PBX that gets hacked. Before you know it, it's, it's generating 100 calls to some Alaskan DID uh, and just racking up charges. The fraud protection, since it's only international, would not, would not even alert you to this, uh, but this system looks at your traffic, establishes a baseline through an algorithm that's been programmed. And as Tom mentioned, as it goes over normal thresholds, you'll be notified. You, you can get a text message, you can get an email, jump in. Generally, these things happen over the weekend. Uh, so you'll, you'll get that notification. You can jump into the endpoint. You can see which of your customers is having the issue. You can reach out to them. You can you know make modifications to their trunk. You can turn off international if it was an international event. Um, but generally, this is a great platform for finding those weird traffic patterns. Again, calling to Alaska, calling into these higher priced destinations within the United States, um, very effective platform. Uh, it does come at a, at a bit of a cost. $50 a month should cover most people on this call. And we can obviously work to negotiate better pricing on that as well. But this is a very system intensive process. That's why we have to charge for it. Uh, it's very database intensive, but uh, this has saved uh, a number of customers in just in the past few years that you know we've been working with them it alerts them hey we've got a, a major issue you think international is is kind of the risk but domestic fraud is much more common um because a lot of the companies do have mechanisms to cut off international um really nobody has anything for domestic and this this platform solves that problem for you thanks tom yep uh, so, yep, that's fraud detection. Uh, we, we touched a little bit on the API earlier, but, you know, the vast majority, 99% of what everyone has seen in the portal today can be accomplished via API. <clears throat> you know, maybe you want to utilize that. Maybe you want to take our coverage, display it on your website. You can build, you know, our inventory. Maybe you maybe you don't want to use our end user portal. You have a an existing website you can build our DID coverage into. Your end users can go <clears throat> pick numbers out of our inventory. They can you know, you can build uh, the ability for them to turn on CNAM or, or enable call forwarding or, or things like that. So <clears throat> now this is free to use. We have full documentation for this, but um, yeah, full API hey, connectivity. System. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm looking at the time. We've got about 15 minutes left. There's yeah. one more thing I wanted to touch on, and then I yep. want to go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, and that would be the stir shaking solution. So if we could touch sure. on that, then we can end the demo and open up questions for the audience. Sure. So uh, we have what we call 
an NSS server, number lookup for stir shaken. This is uh, an easy solution to get your calls signed to become stir shaken compliant. So if you're using VoIP innovations, we can <clears throat> we can add a cloud server to your account and why this is so easy is that you don't have to make any changes to your network whatsoever. Essentially what you do is we spin up the server, we, you know, we authorize it to your account. You, you have a certificate that you would buy from an authorized provider. We load that certificate onto that cloud server. All you have to do is send us the outbound call and we will stamp it with your certificate and send it out on its way. You know, you, you can choose the level of attestation. Most of our customers just use a level full attestation, uh, but it's just a server sitting in the cloud signing your calls. You don't have to do anything. You can just kind of <clears throat> set it and for stamp it. It's good to go. Fully stir shaken compliant. <clears throat> Obviously, the call has to, you know, you have to send the call to VoIP Innovations for us to do that. So, uh, but as long as you're using us for your outbound calling, your termination, uh, we have a full solution for that. You don't need to use a proxy. You don't need to interface with different IPs. You don't have to go into your PBXs, <clears throat> make changes on every single one of them. We can handle uh, that aspect of the call. Um, and then that uh, usually depends on how much traffic you're running through our network. We have different pricing points. Uh, it depends on the number of calls per second. I think the baseline is 10, <clears throat> but it, it'll increment up from there. But yeah, it's, it's a great way to become fully stir shake and compliant, get your calls signed as per the, you know, the FCC mandate. So um, Sebastian, did you want to touch on that anymore? Uh, anything else? No, I, I think to... that's it. I, I really want to make sure we have enough time to answer questions. Sure. So I appreciate it. Great demo. Um, yeah. Elvita, let's go back to you and answer any questions you have. I see too that we, in the questions interface, we have a couple questions. I don't know if anyone would like me to read those out. I'm happy to do that. Um, I see one from Steve. Steve asks, do I need to port my number to VI to, to take part in the off net messaging? And uh, that's, that's a good question. The answer is no, you don't. So off net messaging, a telephone number can be broken up in a number of different ways. The phone service itself where the calls are going, SMS and 911 and CNAM are all different elements of the call. So all those can be consumed a la carte. Great question. Here's a question. Here's a question from Ben. Ben would like to know if Canada and Mexico are considered international calls. Uh, Canada is not, uh, it, Mexico would be, but Tim, maybe you could touch on that a bit because I don't want to misspeak. Yeah, that, that is correct. So Canada is not international. It's considered uh, extended um, uh, extended uh, country code one, uh, but Mexico would be under the inter international call umbrella, which means that you would have to enable international calls and it would be um, part of the traffic that we check for fraud. So you would be protected if somebody tried to uh, send a bunch of calls to Mexico. Thanks, Tim. So I just wanted to remind everyone here that I just launched a quick poll. So in case you want any of these amazing guys to reach out uh, for specific questions or to look into a project, uh, please mark yes. And um, we will be in touch. I was just going to go ahead and flip through you, great demo. Uh, just a couple of slides near the end, kind of a summary. Um, if there's anything here that you guys wanted to, to touch on? I, I really covered it all. Um, I think we but, covered most of it. I, I really want to spend the, the last 10 minutes of this just making sure we answer any questions. Um, looks like we've got Steve's question answered for OffNet SMS. Um, David, uh, why doesn't VI publish SRV records for a server? So when the IP addresses, I can't read the rest of it, but I think I know where you're going. Um, we've always handled uh, our SBCs just on an IP level. Uh, we don't offer any type of SRV record. Uh, so you can communicate via host name FQDN. I assume that's the question. Tim, I don't know if you want to add any more color to that. Yeah, th there are essentially a couple of reasons why um, we don't do that currently. One one big bigger reason is because I, I really there are most PBXs and SVCs don't handle it correctly. They uh, we we noticed that um, I, I don't remember what it was, but some SVC would just grab a random IP address in the list of IPs, uh, completely ignoring the um, the priority and the uh, the weight 
from an SRV record. Uh, so it, it's something, and another, another portion of it is because our outbound uh, traffic, our outbound network is separate from the inbound network. So um, it, it would be kind of difficult to create SRV records that would successfully tell a, um, you know, a SVC PBX that you should be receiving calls from all of these numbers, but you should only send calls to these numbers. So it is just something that um, never worked as as well as we hoped and so we haven't uh moved forward with that but good question uh it's one that we see a lot as tim mentioned we have sbcs that are dedicated for inbound dedicated to outbound uh so that <clears throat> that adds a bit of complication but we want to segment the network obviously for that resiliency okay um <clears throat> simon you had a question um do you have a lexicon to explain some terms like stir shake and DLC, CNAM, hunt type? Uh, I am new so, uh, to trunking, so not all understood. Absolutely. Uh, I think, Simon, I think after this, um, if you want to reach out, I, I imagine you probably said you want someone to contact you. We can go through that and we can provide all of the, the all the answers to these questions. We've got a great wiki uh, that answers all these all the questions of all these various acronyms. What do they mean? Uh, how do they work with our system? So uh, we certainly can connect you with with that. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, David. Um, billing, specifically SMS MMS usage, is not available via API. Manually billing customers for SMS usage does not scale. Please add an API for SMS MMS usage. <laughs> Tim, I don't know if you want to touch on that one at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that is accurate. There is no API uh, for that, but it is available in the S, uh, FTP server um, for the call detail records. The message detail records are available there as well. But yeah, we, we currently don't have uh, specifically an API um, function that will grab that, just the, the SFTP. I did want to add one other thing here from the FreePBX feature perspective, uh, almost forgot about this. In fact, uh, you may have seen SMS Pro. We have a module that we introduced that works with both VI and SIP station that does allow you to get that uh, message detail record directly in FreePBX. So you can see you know, what text, text have taken place, both SMS and MMS in the module inside FreePBX. Also no API currently to get that. Okay, um, <clears throat> we've got a question from uh, Islam. Any way we can customize the name of the payment gateway for certs? Can we use Let's Encrypt? <clears throat> Good question, Tim. I'll let you handle that one. So, um, if if you mean for the cert specifically for Stir Shaken, no. Um, otherwise, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure that the question, the, the context of the, the cert, um, if it is via or for stir shaken, it needs to specifically come from a, um, a certificate authority that there are a list of, um, but, uh, in terms of let's encrypt for, uh, maybe SMS delivery, uh, that, that would work fine. Um. But yeah, 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 it well, might be know. for SSL certs, uh, like for example, on um, like SRTP, TLS, things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that might be where the question is going. Okay, yeah, yeah, that should work fine. Uh, I don't, I can't foresee any issues with that. In fact, I believe we use Let's Encrypt for a number of our systems here as well. We do, yes, yep. Okay. Also quite familiar to the free PBX community. Uh, also, part of that was um, customize the name of the payment gateway, which I'm not sure I understand either. Um, the hosted billing product does allow um, a handful of different um, payment gateways, but I'm not sure what customize the name of it would uh, would entail. Yeah, but if you have a payment gateway you want to use, it, it, it's probably an option that you can use within the hosted billing system if that's what the question was. Uh, if not, we can dive into that a bit deeper. Okay, um, let's see. We've got about four minutes left. I'd be happy to answer any more questions if anyone has one. Okay, I think that's it. Um, 
Yeah, so as Elvita was saying, make sure, uh, go ahead and respond to that survey. We're gonna have the sales team reach out to you. Uh, and I'd love to, to speak with each and every one of you if you're interested in this product. We're really excited about it. And the whole goal of this is, as I said, to make your life easier so you can focus on sales. You don't have to worry about going and, and buying services from five different companies. You can buy them all from Sangoma. And if you have an issue, you got one, one number to call. And you don't have to worry about uh, having vendors point fingers at each other because we're not going to point fingers at each other. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a single vendor and uh, we're really proud of this product. And uh, we're really hoping that um, you can help your business. Mike, like any closing remarks? That. Yeah, I'd like to add something as well. You know, these are products that your account manager, you know, many of you that have joined today are already working with someone from our team, be it Ryan or Ted. They're very well versed in that, but we work very collaboratively with Sebastian and his team. I'm happy to answer any questions. You know, you'll be hearing from us. All right. Thanks, Mike. Anytime. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for taking the time out of your busy day to join us. We appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about this and other Sangoma products. So thanks again. And uh, thanks, everyone. Chris, thanks for day. thanks for driving, Chris and Elvita. Thanks for putting all this together. Really appreciate it. Thanks all. Thanks so much. Yeah, so thank much. you everyone. Thanks, Have a good one. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye.